From the haunting images of the 40-mile Russian military convoy that converged on Ukraine's capital in February, to the real-time tracking of hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian refugees, combining cell phone GPS technology with social media, all part of a new wave of consumer surveillance technology put to a mission-critical test in Ukraine. The ability to monitor anywhere in the world, day, night, um, you know, all weather and in all conditions is just not something that commercial had access to, whereas government has always had access to this technology. Six years ago, Payam Banazetta was a Stanford student only theorizing about how to monitor the world 24-7. We can do global coverage, high revisit time, night and day, all weather with satellites looking at everywhere on Earth. Now his Capella space startup has seven satellites orbiting in space. Equipped with compact X-ray imaging cameras, they can take surveillance pictures day and night, even through clouds and bad weather like Ukraine in winter. This X-ray image of Russian assault vehicles assembling on the Ukrainian border the night of February 23rd signaled the actual invasion before it was officially announced. Our third-party analysts used this imagery to then get tipped to look at Google Maps and see a, essentially a traffic jam of uh, military vehicles getting ready to move in. Once the exclusive domain of the military and intelligence communities, tech startups like Capella Space and Planet Labs, also in San Francisco, launched a new cottage industry of smaller, cheaper satellites, some the size of a loaf of bread, to do commercial satellite surveillance for clients ranging from financial institutions to farmers. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now uh, as the events unfold in Ukraine is um, a bunch of new actors that are making their data available to decision makers to really understand situational awareness, how things have been transgressing in a relatively short period of time. Robbie Shengler's Planet Labs, like Capella Space, got some of their initial contract funding from the Defense Innovation Unit, the Defense Department's startup in the Silicon Valley, for fast-tracking mission-critical technologies faster than the government's traditional procurement system, like it needed during the 2017 North Korean missile crisis. If you go back 20 years, they were literally parachuting film from space and the, and the Defense Department would pick it up somewhere in Kansas and develop the film and look at that. Now we have satellites literally looking at the whole Earth every day. James Crawford started Orbital Insights, one of the first commercial companies using artificial intelligence and machine learning for analyzing the millions of images from these new satellite sources to determine what the surveillance industry calls patterns of life. In Ukraine's case, the civilian exodus, which Orbital Insights' Jens Telefson started tracking soon after the invasion in late February. So we did see many of the large eastern cities in Ukraine started to evacuate. And we can start now to see the routes that they're taking. So this is a, a time loop that you're seeing here. Uh, so starting on the 25th, going into 26th, et cetera, people were starting to primarily drive on uh, city roads heading west. The greatest refugee crisis since World War II can now be monitored on an hourly basis by analysts using GPS signals from Ukrainian cell phones and cars on the move. The data is cross-referenced with a variety of satellite imagery, like these images at key border crossings, and digital representations of street activity in besieged cities like Kharkiv and Mariupol. The city of Mariupol in, um, uh, in southeastern Ukraine and this is the, the foot traffic that we literally see day, day to day. And this is an extreme example. This obviously where- From 600,000 to zero. Down to almost zero, yeah. And so people were evacuating on massive scale. Orbital Insights so in case, CEO Kevin O'Brien came from the financial sector, which initially used satellite surveillance for tracking leading economic indicators, like shopping center parking lot activity for predicting retail sales. Whereas the, a lot of the defense folks are keeping an eye on, you know, the columns of tanks and, and military equipment. But what about the impact to the broader economy, transportation infrastructure, um, uh, energy infrastructure, agriculture, uh, as well as the very large humanitarian aspect of this. And then the potential broader impact into the economy uh, in other parts of Europe as well. We knew that there are these moments where something bad is happening and it requires attention. You know, it could be flooding, it could be, you know, a conflict. And at those moments is when 
you need eyes in the sky the most. As for privacy concerns, GPS signals from cell phones and cars are largely anonymous, and the commercial imagery isn't detailed enough to identify license plates or people's faces like the larger and more powerful surveillance satellites governments have access to. The technology companies are fundamentally interested in patterns. And so while you could imagine a dedicated, targeted effort to get to the bottom of a single person, these are companies that are interested in making money, and that's, that's not really their concern. It's that aggregate pattern that interests them and rewards them financially, not the behavior of any one individual. Dr. Jeffrey Lewis with Middlebury's Institute for International Studies in Monterey, California, is more interested in the transparency benefits of public access to the once classified and prohibitively expensive satellite surveillance. The Iraq war is why I'm in this business. When I was a graduate student, the pre-war debate was playing out, and my experience was that in civil society, we had nothing to say. We all thought that the claims being made by the U.S. intelligence community were suspicious, that they seemed improbable, but we didn't really have any basis to scrutinize those claims or understand the situation for ourselves. Many people are, are taking a look at this as, as facts in order to then uh, reconstruct what did happen over time. And if there were any violations of international law uh, that could be used uh, in the future in order to make sure that uh, you can hold people accountable. In addition to identifying mass grave sites for alleged human rights violations, surveillance targets include energy reserves and economic patterns of life in Russia see how effective the economic sanctions really are. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Mike Saray in San Francisco.